Uh, some facts. I mean, it right now is the leading cause of death amongst men in the UK ages 16 to 54. Correct. That would be shocking for most people to hear. And that's why I want to keep beating that drum. And it's going to be the same for women in a couple of years. Women will, it'll be the same, it'll be the leading cause of death in women because we're seeing a remarkable change in women's drinking. Women under the age of 40 now drink more than men. Why? Because they're richer than men. Women got better jobs, they got better education, better jobs, and they often live with their parents so that they can actually, if they've got less, more disposable income. So women are actually drinking more than men. And because women have got different metabolism, they're going to, they get affected more for the same consumption. So, so we're going to see that in women as well, and it's very scary. Wow. And this manifests itself in personal harm, cirrhosis of the liver, cancer, and then fatal injuries based on this drinking. That's right. Um, and then you even go down and break down like the years that come off your life. And Yeah. I th did you find that interesting? I mean, you know, two bottles of wine per day, knowing that that could take off 21 years of your life is pretty sobering. And I know guys in the city that drink two bottles of wine a day easily. Really? Oh, yeah. And that's, I mean, it's kind of minimum. You're out and that's kind of happens. What? Yeah. There's a lot of drinking. Well, they, the they tell them. Yeah, and this is because there's this peculiar relationship, between, uh, this curvilinear relationship between alcohol and harm. It goes up very much like this. I mean, it goes up so steeply. If, you know, you eventually, you, you know, you just die of alcohol poisoning. You don't have to drink more than, you know. That's one of the amazing things I discovered in my research uh, over the years is in Russia, you know, they don't die of cirrhosis. The Scots have the highest cirrhosis rates in the world because they've, they've got a, they drink enough, to, but they don't drink too much to instantly kill them. In Russia, they drink so much that they just die of alcohol poisoning. Half of all Russian men die of alcohol poisoning before they get cirrhosis. It, it's utterly absurd. Wow. And, and that, their lifespan is, is really short. That's right. They, they're just like 15, 20 years less than ours now. Is that an extreme example you look at sometimes? Well, Russia's a fantastic example because we've got data going back to the Second World War. Russia must be the only, maybe the only country outside Africa that where life expectancy has gone down since the Second World War. So in, in Britain, in most of Europe, men's life expectancy has gone up by about 12 years since the Second World War. I mean, more than women's, you know. We're healthier, we know more, we've got better health better healthcare, we eat better, less pollution. Russians has gone down because, and it's all due to alcohol. But, you know, in Russia, they don't consider beer alcohol. Beer is just, looks like lemonade. They don't count beer. Drink. They don't count how much they, we don't know how much they drink beer, they drink, they don't count it. But, but they do, uh, the, the, the uh, drink they drink is vodka. All the vodka in Russia is made by the state. So 20 odd years ago, um, Gorbachev was horrified by the death rates from alcohol. So he, he, did, he just said, okay, next year, half the production of vodka. Just half the production. So basically people drank less because it was less available. And you saw that, as, you know, within, within a year, life expectancy had gone up by like two years. Yeah. And it went up for the next two next year, and then but the people revolted, and you know, I mean, Russia is quite a difficult place to live, and it's then it's worse than now. It's still it's a pretty miserable place, and alcohol is the opium of the masses there, and they rebelled, and he had to he was forced to make it more available, so life expectancy went up, and then he made it more available, it crashed, and the same thing happened about ten years later, I think, with Yeltsin. So we've we've seen <laughs> through you know, government policies that this. Life, exp this terrible, poor life expectancy is all driven by the availability of alcohol. Right. Um, and you think that ultimately by showing the cost benefits that might get some change in this country. I mean, we're always talking about the NHS and how much it's costing, you know. Well, I hope so. I mean, it, how, uh, look, we can tell, we, we've been pointing out for decades that, you know, as I say, every family in Britain knows someone has been damaged by alcohol. But, and this is an important point in the book. People don't do very much because they enjoy alcohol. So how can you get people then to, to be more rational? And I think, I think the financial argument is this is what I'm going to try. Because, <laughs> you know, people, people do under, you know, people are concerned about money. So if you could see that they would actually be better off if, they, if we all drank less, or if we, 
You'd have to drink a lot less. You just have to reorganize your drinking in society so that the people who are most harmed are, are less harmed. Right. And then we all benefit. Now, what's the reaction normally when you give people these stats and tell people what's going on? They don't want to hear it. No, no. I mean, it's... Uh, well, I mean, the people that come to my lectures tend to... I mean, they tend to be believers. <laughs> they tend to be interested and they tend... The problem is that the people who don't come to my lectures are in the bar and the pub drinking. <laughs> It's getting that message out to people that it, we should get it. And so it's got to be taught at schools. One of the real problems, I mean, the last government has been very remiss. It, it's essentially not made education about drugs and alcohol compulsory in schools. And I just think that's outrageous because every family in Britain is affected by alcohol. So the 10% of the kids going to school have got drunk parents. They need to know what that's about. They need to know how they can seek help. There are kids at 8, 9, 10, 11 who go home and have to look after their parents because they're drunk. It's, it's a devastating situation to be in. But we don't allow the children to talk about it because we don't talk about alcohol and drugs at school.